Welcome to First Lutheran Church in Clifton, New Jersey. I'm Pastor Jeff, and we are delighted that you are here with us for worship today. During this Easter season, we know and celebrate that Christ is with us. Whether you're at home or wherever you might be at this time, know that Jesus is with you. May God's presence bless you in this time together as we worship. Please join me as we confess our sins and hear God's gracious word of forgiveness. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed, alleluia. Trusting in the word of life given in baptism, we are gathered in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. By our baptism into the death and resurrection of Christ, God raised us to new life. Let us confess to God our sins and all that waits for resurrection in our lives. God of love, we find it hard to believe the witness of the resurrection. We resist your unfailing love for us and for others. We turn our backs on the gift of new life, choosing instead the old way of sin, the way that takes us away from you and leads us back toward death. Free us from this power of sin, guide us by your spirit, and help us in our weakness, that we may live as your children, restored to new and everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God and his mercy, has given his son to die for us and for his sake forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please join me in singing, Alleluia, Jesus is risen. God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and also with you. Let us pray in unison. O oh God, you give us your Son as the vine apart from whom we cannot live. Nourish our life in his resurrection, that we may bear the fruit of love and know the fullness of your joy through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading comes from 1 John, the fourth chapter. Beloved, let us love one another because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is God. God's love was revealed among us in this way. 
God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. In this is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God lives in us and his love is perfected in us. By this we know that we abide in him and he in us because he has given us of his spirit. And we have seen and do testify that the Father has sent his Son as the Savior of the world. God abides in those who confess that Jesus is the Son of God, and they abide in God. So we have known and believe the love that God has for us. God is love, and those who abide in love abide in God, and God abides in them. Love has been perfected among us in this way, that we may have boldness on the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. For fear has to do with, with punishment, and whoever fears has not reached perfection in love. We love because he first loved us. Those who say, I love God and hate their brothers and, or sisters are liars. For those who do not love a brother or a sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. The commandment we have from him is this, those who love God must love their brothers and sisters also. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Do we have any children here today? Great. Come on up in front of the screen. Hugs. High fives. Ah, great to see you today. You know, I love God. You love God too? Say that with me. I love God. Yeah, I love God so much. And you know, God says, that if we love him, one of the best ways we could show God that we love God is by loving our brothers and sisters. Now that doesn't just mean our brothers and sisters like our actual brothers and sisters, like I have a brother Tim and a sister Christy, but that means our brothers and sisters, that means everybody. We should love our moms and our dads and our grandmas and grandpas, should love our cousins, and our friends, God wants us to love others. So what are some ways that we can show that we love other people? You're right, we could just say, I love you. And that's a great way, but there's other ways we can do it without using words. What are some things? We can be nice to each other. Yes, oh, we could give them a big hug. We could give them a high five. That's another way that we could show that we love. We could share our food or our, our snacks, share our toys with, with someone else, can show that we love them. Yeah, you really know how to love others. It's important for us to love one another. And that's a way that we can show God that we love God too, simply by loving one another as God first loved us. Well, let's pray that we could do that. Dear Lord God, we love you. We love our brothers and sisters and cousins and parents and friends. Help us to show our love by being kind and sharing and caring for others. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I love you guys. I'll see you soon. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 15th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. 
He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine. You are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit, because apart from me you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Today we gather to worship God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. When you decided to come to church today, you did an amazing thing. Did you realize you did an amazing thing? Well, you did. You set aside time to reconnect with God's power, God's love through worship. To hear God's word, to confess your sins, to receive God's forgiveness. Here, here in worship, we reconnect with other believers and we are united in Christ, whether it's virtually in your homes, or whether it's in person, in the parking lot, or in another space for worship. As we worship, Jesus is with us to strengthen, heal, and renew us in faith. In the beginning, in the beginning, God created us in God's image. Male and female, God created us, and it was good. In the beginning, God created us black and brown, and Asian, and whatever color of skin you might have, or wherever your ethnic origin might be. We are all created in God's image, and it is good that we are created in God's image. In this goodness, God created us to live in healthy relationships with one another, and to worship God with praise and with thanksgiving. Basically, if you want to boil it all down, we are created to love God with all our hearts, our minds, and souls. And to love our neighbor as ourselves. Seems pretty simple, right? At least on the surface. So can you tell me why we mess it up all the time? It's so simple. Love God. Love your neighbor. And yet we just fail miserably sometimes. The truth is, sin causes us to think about ourselves more than we think about others. Sin tempts us sometimes to blame God for all of our struggles. And sin also wants us to take credit for all the good things in life rather than giving God the thanks and praise that God deserves for all the blessings that we have in our lives. Thankfully, God did not hold this against us. As our reading from 1 John tells us, God loves us and God sent his son Jesus to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. God sent Jesus to pay the price for what we owe God for our sins, to forgive us for our sins, so that we can live in God's love once again. When we lose sight of our relationship with God, we get ourselves in trouble. But when we live as God created us to live, loving God and loving one another, 
God blesses us with the true life that God intended for us in the first place. Jesus is very clear about this in our gospel lesson from John. If you look at these eight verses in John's gospel, one word will leap out at you. Abide. Abide. In fact, this word abide is used eight times in four verses. Abide in me and I abide in you. Unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish and it will be done for you. Abide. What is Jesus saying? In the Bible, the word abide can also be translated as remain in me, and I remain in you. Dwell in me, and I will dwell in you. Live in me, and I will live in you. Jesus is saying that we need to stay connected, because being connected with Jesus is the only way we can have the true life that God intends for us. A life that is grounded in Jesus' love and powered by God's strength. A life that truly changes the world in Jesus' name. That's what bearing fruit means. Changing the world in Jesus' name. Loving God and loving our neighbor as ourselves. This reminds me of the the first time I, I ever did electrical work by myself. It was a relatively simple job. I just wanted to change out an old outlet that was broken and no longer worked. I gathered all the tools I needed and I purchased a new outlet for a couple bucks down at the store. I turned off the breaker that supplied the power to the outlet and I unplugged the lamp just to be extra safe. Uh, that was plugged in there. I removed the cover plate and the old outlet, and then I carefully attached the wires onto the new plug. I replaced the, the cover plate and plugged in the lamp, and I turned it on. Nothing. Looked at everything again, and I tried to switch again. Nothing. No light. It didn't work. I went back and I checked everything over and over again, plugged it in again, tried it again, and nothing. The lamp just didn't work. Then it struck me. And you probably already figured it out way before I did when I did this. I forgot to go back downstairs and flip that breaker again and connect it to the power source. I did that and sure enough, that light came right on and that outlet was replaced and working. It powered that lamp for a long, long time. Just like that, Jesus says we need to stay connected to God's power because without God's power, we cannot do what we were created to do to truly love God and to love our neighbors as ourselves, to change the world in Jesus' name, to bear fruit in Jesus' name. When we gather for worship, wherever that might be, we connect to the power of God. When we read the Bible here in church or on our own, we live in Christ. When we praise God for the beautiful creation around us or for our daily life and bread for our family and our friends, when we give God the thanks and praise, it keeps us connected to God's power so that we can truly live, changing the world in Jesus' name, one person at a time with God's powerful 
Today we worship God in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Each one of us as we worship is created in God's image. Each one of us, regardless of our age or gender or color of skin, is a beloved child of God. Each one of us is uniquely created and gifted to make a difference in this world, to bear fruit in Jesus' name. But we cannot do this when we neglect to connect to God's powerful love. We are powerless if we forget to flip that breaker switch on, if we neglect to worship, to pray, and to read the Bible. Today, you have chosen an amazing thing to do with your time. You have chosen to connect with God and God's power and God's love. This is good because there is work to be done. This world is in need of love and peace and hope. This world needs you to be a positive force, building people up in God's love, uniting the human family of God. We all belong to this family of God. We are all created in God's image, and it is good. This world needs you to bear fruit in Jesus' name. My friend, Jesus is with us today. Jesus is with you today abiding in your heart, in your soul, in your mind. My friends, be filled with God's love, be filled with God's power, and go in peace to change the world in Jesus' name, bearing fruit for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let us confess together our faith through the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Called into unity with one another and the whole creation, let us pray for our shared world. God of all fruitfulness, you abide in your church and your church abides in you. Cleanse us by your word and give yourself to the whole church on earth so that it bears fruit and witnesses to your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You have created the heavens and the earth. As we wonder at the beauty of creation, may we seek vital connections among all that depends on the earth for life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You rule the nations with justice and love. Give the leaders of the earth assurance of your abiding presence, that they may lead not by fear, but with love for those they are called to serve. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You have loved us so that we can love others. We pray for all in need of your love, those who are poor, lowly, outcast, weak, or fearful. Provide for the needs of all, especially those we name before you in our hearts. 
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You gather us with all the saints by the power of your spirit, especially those we name in our hearts. With them may our hearts live forever in your keeping. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. With bold confidence in your love, almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray together the prayer which our Lord Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the risen Lord be with you always, and also with you. I invite you at this time, if there are others in the room with you, to share the peace with those who are with you. And if you're by yourself, now or after worship, pick up the phone, text someone, give someone a call, send them an email. Simply share the peace of the Lord with someone else. I'd like to say a word about your offerings. Our offerings are our grateful response to all that God has given to us. They are making a difference in Jesus' name in our local and global communities. Offerings may be given electronically or by mailing a check to First Lutheran Church, 1337, Van Houten Avenue in Clifton, New Jersey, 07013. Thank you for your partnership and for making a difference in Jesus' name in this way. Let us pray in unison. Merciful God, our ordinary gifts seem small for such a celebration, but you make of them an abundance, just as you do with our lives. Feed us again with your word for service in your name, in the strength of the risen Christ. Amen. Please join me in singing, Alleluia, sing to Jesus. Oh, oh, oh. 
Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. God bless you.